So over the past two years, big, big, big uh, guns with uh, loud megaphones have st finally spoken up with language that now finally scared some of these engineers into a higher level of action or non-action. Um, the, the truth of the matter is, is that what we're finding out with AMI systems and SCADA systems that are out there now, that there's actually more backflow happening at the meter than we ever really thought there was. And because of that, um, it's brought in a new interested party. And uh, that, that interested party is in the insurance companies because they now, because realizing that there are design issues with some of these things, then there's liability, there's errors and omissions that these, these guys are committing, they've got a new pocket to pick. And so all these insurers are coming out with, with a higher level of what we call the subrogation clause, right? Where they reach through the insured and, and get a, a, a settlement from either the designer or even sometimes the purveyor. And uh, consider these facts. Water utilities are seeking more containment backflow protection. That's kind of a duh from our point of view, from what we're seeing, and it's obvious, right? Um, and that's because of this. AWWA statement, and this is the preamble to the cross-connection control uh, manual that EPA puts out. And it says, the return of any, public, any water to the public water system after the water has been used by, for any purpose on the customer's premises or within the customer's piping system is unacceptable and opposed by AWWA, right? There's also this issue about uh, when does a low hazard building stop being a low hazard building just because there's 50 year old pipes with lead in every joint? And you cannot forever just uh, be ready to accept the fact that they, were, they don't have a growing risk just in, their, in the age of the pipes. The bootleg contingency is the, the idea where people change stuff. Usually, they usually do it unwittingly. It's not in any way on purpose, but out of ignorance, maybe to improve some local process at their business, they change the plumbing. And so all of these things go into why you can't, why we need containment backflow preventers. So another two is more containment systems are being specified as RPZ, regardless of the hazard threshold. I know you guys are very used to, especially from TCEQ, this idea that a hazard level is, is sort of defined quite objectively. There's a list of high hazards. You generally live in that environment with everything. There are cities out there that are dumping the high hazard uh, threshold altogether and eliminating double checks, and I'll show you just a few of them. Actually, I've, I've eliminated most of that detail. I'll show you something just in the interest of time, but we'll talk about it. And then finally, for containment, the AWWA, ASPE, the legal community, all of them recognize outside and above ground as best practice. So this is what we're desperately trying to show civil engineers mainly, but also plumbing engineers because they've got to kind of be willing to pass that work off in order for it to become an outside you know, installation. And we have had a struggle with that in some areas. So where's all the momentum? What are we seeing that's kind of giving us hope that this is moving in the right direction for your guys' sake? And I give, this is not something I gave to the civil engineers, but I did mention some of this here. I was telling you earlier that David DeBoard asked me to present this presentation to the, the biannual ASPE convention this past Halloween in uh, Phoenix. And this was the name of it, Let the Civil Designer Deal with the Containment Backflow System. Well, why would you think that would be important? Why, would, why does the civil engineer need to do it? Well, <clears throat> one of the main things we don't think about is that when you're designing a backflow preventer to be mounted outside, above ground, you're basically doing it so that it has the opportunity to flood, right? Well, what do plumbing engineers know about designing contour, contoured, uh, you know, water dissipation? Right. They know nothing about it. So even if they're smart enough to put it outside, inside their little six-foot halo outside the building, they'd be stupid to take on the task because they aren't qualified to deal with the water runoff. So that's why civil engineers need to do this. Well, so what does that mean? Well, there's a problem. Civil engineers don't do anything without a standard detail. <laughs> you know, plumbing engineers pick on them all the time because, gosh, we have to design all this shit, and all you guys have to do is look at standard detail. But it's true. Civil engineers, they do, they are used to dealing with roadways, highways, water. 
you know, stormwater runoff, all that stuff's in standard details. And if you expect them to pick this up in mass, they're not going to do it if there's not a standard detail available from the city to go on. So, we've been, we spend a lot of our time, the rest of our time was spent working with cities to develop standard details that are, that are sort of in line with, with best practices. That's how we get paid. <coughs> you know, we'll go out and do the work, and a company like Safety Cover pays us for our time. It works great because they're going to benefit over the long run for having it done. And we get the benefit of, of, of getting the, the, the standard details into the city's hands. So this, I want to show you Gwinnett County because this is pretty interesting. We haven't talked too much about subrogation and this idea that this water, water districts are starting to feel the, the pain of being in line for a lawsuit more and more as these things begin to happen. But Gwinnett County, so, so this is their new standard detail. They wanted to show their meter vault and their backflow preventer system sort of in one drawing. Oh, well, that's a, an, there it is. <coughs> that, this is yes, elevation. And they're showing an end type. They're showing a Wilkins there. But the point is, they also show the old way. Why? Well, just like you said, you've got to take what you can take. And if you're going to show the old way, you better do something like, I'm going to get through the elevation here, like this. This is what it says. This is a pretty, pretty strong language. Installing a backflow preventer assembly below grade in an area where the vault or box is prone to flooding, either by runoff of water, table seepage, or table seepage, is not recommended as best practice. Property owner and designers acknowledge that placing a backflow preventer of any kind below grade increases the risk of cross-connection and contamination. According to the Foundation of Cross-Connection Control and Hydraulic Research at the University of Southern California, even double-check valve assemblies should be installed above grade because eduction, that's another name for what we were talking about earlier, induction and uh, aspiration, from a worn test cock in a flooded vault will create a cross-connection between the water in the pit and the backflow preventer assembly. This can occur where the test cocks are open or closed. Systems shall be installed and maintained to prevent submersion of any portion of the piping at all times. Now, have you ever seen anything that... that you have to have a pump down there. You've got to put a pump. You've got to do something, but you cannot let that thing flood. And so, cities are actually saying, oh, you do this, but be warned. This isn't best practices. And that by doing that, they kind of feel like they've covered their tail. All right. So I, I had a bunch of, uh, when I usually do this, and I'm doing this in the interest of time, I show you a whole bunch of standard details and a whole bunch of codes that show how cities have moved. But this is the summation of it. These are the ones we know of, the cities that have changed to increase RPZ use and to move them outside or both. Okay? <coughs> all these cities, and these are just the ones we know of in the past five years. They've all increased, and in some cases, like in the Chicago area, they're outlawing RPZs because, I mean, sorry, d double checks altogether. You cannot use a double check on a commercial line for uh, any kind of domestic water, uh, and you can't use it for irrigation in most of these places up there in that area. So uh, know that this is happening, and it's happening rather rapidly. All right, so what is, where is it at the moment? More outdoor above ground standard details. So I'm showing you several cities that have recently added standard details that are really great, all of them. And they, they, they align with best practices. They show, in many cases, the end type solution, which is so favorable to property owners and even cities because they, they want a smaller visual envelope too. And these are just some examples of some of the cities that have done it. So no city can say that there's nothing out in the public domain that I can get my hands on to copy or red line and get a start. They can all do this for very little trouble. So. Smaller solutions, and we've been talking in, uh, uh, sort of about these end types. This is a comparison. This is an eight inch double check uh, with the beautiful Y strainer over here. The enclosure for that bad boy is 12 feet long, six feet, eight inches tall. Everybody wants that on the front of their property, right? <coughs> well, here's an alternative. It happens to be a Wilkins. I'm not picking on Watts here. It's just I didn't have a field photograph of a Watts version. This happens to be the 450DA. It's also a double check. These are fire lines. <coughs> Actually, no, that's a, that's a, yeah, it's a DA. Anyway, the point is, it's also an eight inch backflow preventer. But look at the difference in size. That sucker's five feet, four inches square, and five feet, two inches tall. Which one do you want? 
You know, there's no, co no comparison. Now, you'll save money in this. Now, the, 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 the assembly is more expensive, by 10% maybe. What would you say, Ryan, about right for an for a N-type? But you save more than enough because of the less expensive enclosure. Another reason that there's adjustments in aesthetics. So N-type is a really important adjustment to aesthetics. It makes people hate them less, right? The other thing that's starting to emerge, and this happened, these are Arlington's details. You can see they're showing an N-type here as well. But watch this right here. This is the site plan for it, and you're all used to seeing this thing right up here inside the right of way, right? Well, Arlington's letting them do that. Ooh, wait a minute. That, lets you, that means that there's exposed pipe between the meter and the backflow preventer, right? And you can put all the no tap here signage you want, but it's at risk. Well, here, you know who made the winning argument? It was Buzz Kushner. He's the water director in Arlington. He said, don't we have RPZs inside buildings that are in the same situation, the meters at the street and the RPZs in the building? What's the difference? That's right, exactly. So that won the day because they knew that if they could let you put it up against the building and you can landscape screen it, it'll be a whole lot less of an issue. So that's what won the day.